Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and today we're going to be discussing with John Dufresne of KineticConsulting.net the basics of rifle selection. What kind of rifle should you buy? Obviously, an AR-15 style rifle is typically what most people are going to go for, but John's going to go through and tell us what are the basics, what do you look for, what kind of rifle, what manufacturer, what bells and whistles do you put on it, what are you going to need, what don't you need. Cool. So um, the basics of rifle selection are pretty easy. I, I think a lot of people overcomplicate them a little bit. Um, once you once you understand what you need based off of, once again, your situation and your environment, right? that's, that's going to dictate a lot of different things. Um, so if, if you're into, um, more longer distances or want to want kind of an overall, um, rifle that you can use for almost anything, uh, you, you want to sit around the, the longer distance or longer barreled rifles. So being a 14.5 inch rifle or, or a 16 inch rifle. If you're looking at more shorter distances or working within more confined spaces and vehicles and inside of structures and stuff like that, you'll find that's where most people go down to the 11.5s and the 10.5 rifles. So when when you figure out like where you want to kind of live, where where you're planning on doing your stuff or where where you plan on shooting the most or like your environment that you live in. If you live on, once again, the farmland kind of uh, environment, longer distances and stuff, you may want a longer rifle. You get more room to play and you, you can get a little bit more velocity out of them. You can actually stabilize bullets a little better for longer distances. So it, it would behoove you to have a longer gun. Um, if you're in a more confined spaces, like you live in an apartment or you live in smaller houses or you live in places or work in places that are more confined in some, some way, um, shorter guns usually end up being the game. So for example, when I was in the military, uh, I was issued a 14.5 inch rifle, uh, upper or the upper receiver and a 10.3 inch upper receiver. And it was up to you when you wanted to use which one that you threw on the lower receiver of the rifle. So for example, this here is an 11.5 inch rifle or the barrel length is 11.5 inches. And this one, if I wanted to change it to a 16 inch, 20 inch, uh, whatever inch rifle, all I have to do is pull two pins, pop the upper receiver off, put a upper receiver on that has its own optics set up and its own length. And I'm good to go. So the lower receiver is just what houses the trigger mechanism and the magwell and the buffer system. Uh, other than that, it's it's just a, a placeholder per se. And the upper receiver kind of takes its place on top of it and does all the work. So if I knew I was going to go play in the mountains more than I was going to play in an urban area, I would go ahead and put on the longer upper receiver. Uh, that would give me a little bit more velocity, a little bit more stabilization of bullets. And I had an optic on there that could give me some magnification. I could see a little bit better. If I knew we were going into a smaller, confined, more city-like area, I would go ahead and put my 10.3-inch upper on, and that one was for closer, more confined spaces. Or if I was working in vehicles, that's what I would do as well. So environment, situation, all depend. Now, having both is even better than not having either, and having one could be substitute for the other one depending on what you do. So for example, this 11.5 inch upper, I have a scope on here, right? a, 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 a variable powered optic that I can go from 1x all the way to 10x in vision or in magnification. And it allows me to actually shoot and which I shot this rifle out to 600 yards recently. And with the right ammo, with the right shooter, right, the person able to actually shoot that far, and the actual ability to see that far, you can make one of these stretch out pretty, pretty good. And 600 yards is quite, it's plenty <laughs> for the majority of, of shooters that are out there. They're never going to shoot that far or most won't even push their limits to that. Like six football fields end to end. Exactly. So, um, far. yeah, I mean, uh, unless you've shot farther, right? Like, <laughs> which uh, if you remember, we, we shot out to 500 in one day of you for the first time ever shooting at 100 yards, at mm -hmm. 200 yards, at 300 yards, but with proper instruction, proper training, proper equipment, you can get any distance. 
Uh, I recently shot out to a mile <laughs> in Idaho and it was just the proper rifle with the proper ammo, with the proper training and the proper distance. Well, that's it. So it's super, it, it's actually easier than most think, but most are just, um, stalled by the equipment. They're like, which one do I pick? So what's your environment? What's your situation? What are you trying to accomplish with that rifle? And then we'll start choosing from there. Now, once you pick how long you want your rifle, it comes down to the little accessories and stuff. All the other stuff can be changed whenever you feel. Even the barrels can be changed whenever you feel too, but it's a little bit more of a longer process. But your grips, your your butt stocks, your optic selection, um, all of those are pretty standard. Most rifles come with them uh, in the sense of butt stock and your your actual grips. And those are kind of personal preference. What do you like? What do you not like? Um, that's the magic of going to classes. Like you get to go and if you see something, you're like, Hey, can I feel that? Or can I hold it? Or can I, you know, shoot it or whatever? People are usually very open to letting you try out their stuff. Um, in a class, like they're there to learn. They know you're there to learn. That's why you guys went to a class <laughs> and, uh, and trying out other things actually improves that ability to kind of see what you you're enjoying or what you like. Optic selection is just based off of what you're going to do with it. So for me, I'm a teacher, but I also like shooting farther out. I like having the ability to shoot under night vision. I like other things too, but this gives me the ability to do all of that in one big setup. Is it heavy? Yes. That's what push-ups are for. Um, but uh, but yes. a lightweight gun, my bad. A lightweight gun isn't something that I'm trying to accomplish with this i'm trying to accomplish something that i could use it's helpful to lift weights if you're gonna especially articulate rifles do cqb things of that nature because oh yeah with your ammo on it and your everything else you got on your body the shit gets heavy and if you're Mm -hmm. out of shape you're gonna be sucking eggs yeah you don't you don't see uh dudes in and doing cool guy stuff that are out of shape not usually yeah, you don't you don't see the spaghetti armed anti gun David Hogg out there. He wouldn't be able to probably handle one of these <laughs> rifles without his arms breaking off. But I bet you I could teach him how. I bet you could. Yeah. So he uh, probably change his perspective on maybe if he became competent. If he was open minded enough, that's the biggest thing. He's like, like the commie Kool Aid at this point. So that sucks. Poor poor bastard. Um, now going further up the the handguard like. Choosing lights and choosing lasers are specific to you. Um, when it comes to lights, there's there's a lot of good light companies that make good lights, like Mod Light, Cloud Defensive, Surefire, things like that. Um, if you're you are going to use this rifle for home defense or self defense in any way, uh, a light is mandatory in my opinion. The, the light is what's going to give you identification of your target so you can choose whether you need to shoot or not. Um, the, the cases out there... You don't of, want to be shooting your daughter's boyfriend when he sneaks in at night. Right. Safe. Well, you may want to, <laughs> but you may not be able to, right? Like, legally. So... John's daughter is about eight months old. <laughs> He's so, already thinking. So uh, that's that's what landmines are for. Um, no, the the if he can get across the moat, the, he's going to contend with the, the land poor guy's going to have to be already approved to be in the house. So no, but in the grand scheme of things, like if I if I want to be able to shoot at anything, whether it's animal, four legged critters, two legged critters, um, or just paper critters, right? Like, the chupacabras, like paper targets. Um, I need to be able to see them and in the dark, like sometimes we can't see them or we could see an outline of something, but we can't identify it fully. And a light on your firearm is a must. If you're a professional and you're watching this, like law enforcement, military, um, or like you, you do this like for varmint stuff, anything like that, you should have some kind of source of light or source of, uh, using some kind of artificial, uh, lighting, whether it's IR or white light to be able to identify your target and, uh, and, and IR, I mean, infrared. So, uh, if you're not, that's unprofessional and you should go check yourself, right? Like, and if that hurt your feelings, that's, you're probably the one I'm talking to, right? Like if, if it hurts your feelings that I said that you, you need to go get a light. Um, now going, going further, like when you start working in the night vision world, that's where you'll start seeing laser devices and stuff like that. And laser devices are very specific to that. Not that you can't use them during the day because they do have a visible setting 
and they can be used with gas masks and they could be used in all alternate or awkward positions, but they're not super visible during the day. So they're not like you would see in the movies. Um, they're not as they're, they have to be zeroed separately. They have to be cared for. They're another source of batteries. So most people don't want to put them on their guns or most people put them in the wrong place because they're too heavy at the front of the gun. Um, but once again, you can do pushups for that. So it, it's up to you and what your environment and your situation are going to dictate. But as you can see, like based on my rifle, it's, it's towards me trying to accomplish as much as I can with such a small or short gun and be able to teach with it in all the variations and things that I do on a normal basis. Um, and sometimes I'll pop this scope off and I'll put a red dot on there, depending on what I'm doing. It, it, that's the magic of options. And those of you that are watching this in the U.S., like you have options right now. Some of you, uh, those that don't stay in your damn state and fix it. Don't come to ours. Um, but <laughs> bring that commie bullshit with you. Yeah. But either way, um, the, the grand scheme of things is like you can you can do and mix and match with a lot of this stuff. And this rifle being from Cobalt Kinetics, the cool part is you can you can easily go to their website and or call them and they'll build the rifle to your liking. And they have options of optics and lights and things like that that they could add to the guns. And obviously for a, an extra charge, and I have no idea what the prices are. That's something you have to look up with them. But that's something that's offered by a company. I don't know how many companies actually do that and offer like full packages. But it's kind of cool that they do so that you can literally go out and be like, I could buy this all from one place. Make it easier on yourself. You buy it on one online spec it the way you want mm -hmm. and then you give them the ffl the the exactly. licensed gun shop in your state your city they'll ship it to them you go to that gun shop they run your background and once you pass all that yeah then and depending on the state if there's a waiting period or not or if you, you know in florida if you got concealed carry you, you, know, you could take your pistols and rifles home that day and i think mm -hmm. normally was it a five-day waiting period? it's five you days don't? yeah it's five uh business days so monday through friday not they don't count Saturday and Sunday. Because you hear a lot about that in the news mm -hmm. about, oh, you just – because they like one of the shooters that just happened, uh, the 4th of July parade. Like, oh, he bought it online. It's like, well, he ordered it online, and then it has to be sent to a gun shop licensed in the area. Mm -hmm. The dude went and passed – yeah, no background check. No manufacturer just sends it to your house. Yeah, exactly. They're but just, the media makes it sound like, oh, you can just buy these online. Absolutely. It's easier to buy a AR-15 than it is to, to vote. But just like anything, they half-ass it. <laughs> so so the, the media doesn't like telling you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Because most of them are leftists and they want guns banned and only the government and well, I think criminals it's, will have it. It's guns. also a lack of education. Most of them don't know. Yeah. They don't know any better. And they may have their own speculations on how it works or they read that he got it online that's just what they reiterate um but just like anything else to to make a better situation education is needed so they're just uneducated and i i once again if that hurts their feelings like that's their fault they, they need to go get med, more educated right go 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 to a gun shop and ask just like do the research you can google it and find out what the process is and it tells you right there like every shop that sells firearms on the on a website has to send them and if you go to any of those websites it says it they're right there you yeah there's to a send blank it to, you gotta put the ffl number and mm -hmm. the address of it yep. gun shop and yeah. then they contact them they exchange information they have to mail it directly to them and once it gets there they have to the shop actually does all the paperwork and the background check and everything for you so i, I think people just are don't have the education on what the process is so they just assume and they believe their tv unfortunately right and they think it's amazon dropping off guns yeah and unfortunately it's not you know 80 years ago when they used to do that shit it used to be in a sears call it catalog yeah <laughs> at least that's what my grandpa told me <laughs> yeah. well my dad was saying that when they were growing up in the 50s and 60s he's buying a, a, a pistol a, usually it's a 22 revolver it's, mm -hmm. it's like buying a hammer or a screwdriver it was like wasn't a big deal because it's a tool yeah humans are the weapons i guess lastly we can talk about is uh muzzle devices All right so here you can see on Corey's rifle yeah good luck no oh, is it stuck nice i think so uh, i'll see if i can get it off after 
But on Corey's rifle here, you can see his suppressor uh, from Surefire. Uh, it it's a baffle style system that uh, pretty much captures gas for a limited amount of time to not cause a higher sound or um, volume of the actual firearm. It is not quiet. No, <laughs> it's still not quiet. So the misconceptions people have with that is it's pretty funny, but it's it's not a quiet rifle even with a suppressor on there. It's the same thing with the suppressor I was showing here from Huxworks. So same concepts of of uh, kind of capturing gases and keeping them from expanding too quickly and causing a lot of noise. Uh, here we have them captured and they're being dissipated out the front end of the gun, which is kind of cool and also protects you from getting all those gases in your face. Suppressors aren't hard to get. They're just a long process to get. You have to pay an extra tax stamp to, you know, the king and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and make sure that they get their little say or whatever. Um, I believe the $200 tax stamp was created back then because $200 was a lot of money. Um, and yeah, the goal was to make it so expensive for the average person they to get the get device it. that then they wouldn't go ahead and get it. And because again, the politicians they don't want the people being armed. Because the reality is, deep down, the politicians that are so anti gun and they want you disarmed, the bottom line is what they really want to do. They know if everybody was armed and they went ahead and tried to do it, it they get shot. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. And, and it's it's Hitler always did it. He he first thing he did is says the Jews can't have guns. We're you don't need them. You're not in the military army. We're going to protect you anyways. And people followed the law and they gave them up. And mm -hmm. six million of them got murdered. We just saw it recently in Australia. Yeah, right? they 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 were disarmed. And guess what happened when they didn't like what the government was doing to them? They revolted and they now took the you government to a quarantine camp. Yeah, they just showed up. Said hey, you got to quarantine for X number of days because you didn't get the jab and the, the police came at gunpoint and removed you from your home and took you and threw you in a camp. So people said, Oh, the government's going to protect us. We don't need these AR 15 guns as government. This is a civilized society. It can't happen here. And yet it's so you, now you've got the population conditioned that, Oh, well concentration camps are a thing. It's not a concentration camp. It's a quarantine yeah. camp for your safety, for your own safety. Same shit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. The, That's the first thing governments always do. Is they disarm their citizens. The communists did it. The, the Pol Pot. Mm -hmm. um, Venezuela. Before the government uh, starts murdering its citizens, the first thing they always do is outlaw guns. And then once the people are disarmed, they, you know, in Canada, Trudeau just, you know, he slipped up the other day, was talking about his, um, he was putting a cap on firearms. You can't import anymore. You can't sell them anymore, and you can't transfer them anymore. And he let it slip out the gun ban. He was like, I mean, he says, he says, the the ban, and he's like, no, I mean the the cap, the cap that we put on it. Because at the end of the day, they don't believe in firearm ownership. And like we we're talking about at lunch, he's one of Klaus Schwab's best students, and Christina, Christina Newland, who's the deputy prime minister used to be in charge of the World Economic Forum because Klaus Schwab says, we have penetrated the governments of the West. And one thing we are very proud of is Prime Minister Tudo and half of his cabinet are all World Economic Forum people. And so when the shooting happened at the school shooting, it had nothing to do with Canada. Trudeau says, ah, that's it, no more pistols. We're going to keep everybody safe. And so that's the first thing they do. And then, I don't know, five years, a few years down the road, they'll go, now we're going to ban them. We're going to – it's a mandatory government buyback. And then once you're disarmed, the government can send people to make you do whatever they want at gunpoint. Yep. Not only that, but I don't know about you, but there's not enough cops. There's not enough people to protect us as individuals. And you look at all these politicians that are banning all this shit. They're protected by individuals with firearms. And Why? Even when you do call the police, look at the the school. response times. There, or, I was yeah. just reading that over the weekend it just came out. There were three different cops that had their rifles. They had sights on that dude. One of them was didn't said he didn't shoot because he was waiting for permission to shoot the guy. And so, and then when the the kid started shooting at the police, they dipped out and just let him continue his rampage for hour seventy minutes. I think it was. 
Yeah. And they did nothing. Wow. So even the police, if you call the police, they're, they're do they legally, I think the Supreme Court even ruled on this, they don't actually have to come and save you yeah. or do anything. So you have to do that yourself. It's, it's not really serve and protect. We may or may not serve and protect. But if you piss us off, then we'll beat you up and throw you in jail. And you're the only one that can control your own fate. Yep. So what I highly recommend, if you are so inclined and you want to learn from the best, then you go to kineticconsulting.net and you sign up for one of John's rifle mechanics classes. Now, what kind of skill level do you want students to have before they come to one of your classes? So for, for a mechanics course, uh, because I don't teach basic shooting, um, I'd like you to at least be safe and know the fundamentals or the basic functions of your firearm before coming. Um, it shouldn't be the day that you pull it out of the box, pull the tag off and be like, I'm here for class. Like that's not, that's not my kind of classes. And it's not to, uh, uh, belittle those peeps. They, they need learning too, and they need to be taught as well. But I like to do those individually. I don't like 15 brand new people on the line that's unsafe. Yeah. So for safety sake, for also you getting the best for your buck in the sense of learning and your one-on-one -on -one attention, I do those in private lessons. So and if you're inexperienced, you just got your rifle, you have maybe not even zeroed it yet, you want to do a few privates. And then once John yeah. gives you the thumbs up after the privates, then you go register for one of his rifle mechanic classes where you're on the line with other shooters. And, and even if you don't own a rifle or, or even a handgun, uh, private lessons, you can borrow one and kind of learn and see what you would want to learn or what you would want to buy. Uh, I have plenty of options, and you just have to let me know, email me, and once we schedule a time, I can bring out tons of stuff. Um, not that I have everything in the world, but I have a bunch of options and things like that that people can kind of see what it feels like, learn, learn with it a little bit, and see if that's something they want to use or if it's something that's not going to be fitting for them. So uh, going to the website, if you're looking for a class or want to go to a class or take a class, uh, you can just scroll down on the homepage and you can see all the classes that I have going on in 2022, 2023 so far. It's a living document, so it just continues to like grow or when a class passes, I delete it off of there. But let's say you wanted to go to any of these, like let's say uh, Weaponized Geometry in Vero Beach, you'd click it. And it would take you right to the weaponized geometry page and you would just have to select which date depending on which dates were available and if it's um lighter gray color that means it's out of stock so you wouldn't be able to do it because these classes sell out pretty quick uh, but you can be notified if a slot opens up and somebody canceled on me and uh and as long as there's enough time to fill the spot you would get notified and you can pay for your spot in the class but Every class is like this where you can you can click right onto it from the schedule and it'll take you right to all the available classes and dates and locations. And they're all over the US and if you see one that you you want to do and it's not anywhere near you and you have the ability to host or have the facility to host, that's where you would go to that hosting tab again and go through that process of hosting. It's actually very easy. I'm not very high maintenance when it comes to things. Uh, I'd rather get more people to come learn than make it so complicated that people can't learn, right? They, they are not going to be willing to go through the, the hoops to get me there to actually go through the process of learning. So private individuals, law enforcement, I know sometimes you train some military units as well. Yep. So anybody that wants to host a class or to have John teach your unit, your, the guys you work with in law enforcement, or just your friends or family, you this is the process. I highly recommend it. Super simple.